What's going on there, folks? Good evening, or uh, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on this Sunday. Uh, it is September 10th, 2023, about 11.54 a.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.6. Uh, that comes after a little bit of activity here across the Alaska region. Uh, we did see uh, some activity stirring up here with a 4.9 earthquake along the Aleutian Trench earlier this morning, along with a couple other smaller quakes out here um, around that same time frame. Looking at the big scale here, the grand scale of things here, uh, shows some movement out across the Japan area once again. Got uh, a little bit of swarming kicking off here in this area. I still think something big is about ready to brew out here, or is brewing. Over the past uh, seven days or so, we've seen a uh, pretty good swarm of activity out here just off the coast of Japan, around the uh, Okinawa area, well, just north of there, it looks like, uh, with a bunch of fours and fives kicking off. So, again, we did see uh, another 5.3 in this mix earlier this morning, uh, and then now we just got a 4.7 a little bit further up. Uh, so it looks like increasing possibilities here of seeing some larger scale movement in this area of that plate boundary. Also a little activity across the Mariana Trench. Uh, that earthquake was from actually yesterday it looks like. I haven't really seen anything further along this region. Uh, a little cluster of activity across the Maluka Sea. Uh, mixed bag from yesterday and today. Uh, further to the west over here across the uh, China area. Uh, looks like these are from yesterday. Really haven't seen any newer movement across this plate boundary. Uh, a look at the Earthquake 3D globe here uh, shows about the same. Uh, I don't think that 5.8 up here is legit. They've been uh, they've been popping off some false earthquakes up here. And that's the EMSC model that sometimes uh, will show uh, you know phantom large earthquakes around this area when in fact it was only like a 2.5. So we have to be uh, careful as to take, uh, you know, this activity around this region uh, legitly. The activity there in Morocco is continuing, though. This 5.8, not a legit 5.8 for that area. Uh, it looks like that's just a little bit further up here uh, towards the Spain region. But that's, again, that's going to be a smaller quake. For whatever reason, the EMSC model on the globe shows it as a larger quake. So just be hesitant about the uh, actual... Uh, accuracy of these quakes that pop up on the globe. Uh, Morocco though 4.2 earlier this morning it looks like still expected to see some aftershock activity within that region uh, so just you know eventually it should taper off far as the, ap the uh, aftershock movement goes. All right uh, let's go ahead and back out of here. I know New Zealand's been having a little bit of movement uh, here also the Kermadec Trench 4.7 that uh, earthquake coming in in the past couple hours uh, just south of the Kermadec Islands area. Uh, this looks like it's starting to work its way down across New Zealand area. Let's go ahead and check out the latest uh, earthquake map here from the GeoNet servers there in New Zealand. This is going to be the uh, week and above. Well, I'm going to include the all magnitudes here just to see everything that's going on. I did get a notification here just a short time ago about a three-pointer around the uh, New Zealand area, North Island, but it looks like it got deleted. So these are going to be all deleted events as well. Uh, there's 4.6 up along the Kermadec Islands area. Aside from that, it looks like quite a few small microquakes, but uh, nothing major going on here across the New Zealand area for now. A look at the drums here. Uh, most of this activity that we're seeing um, here on this map was probably going to be somewhat associated with the Kermadec Trench. Notice this area up here is showing that a little bit more prominent signature. Uh, but there is a handful of other quakes in there as well. Uh, looks like that could be... I'm not 100% certain where this is centered at, but uh, a little bit of activity stirring up here in uh, the last couple hours around the New Zealand area. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, jumping over here across the South America region, a handful of smaller quakes. Uh, right around the Peru-Chile Trench, some of this deep, some of it shallow. The last one of 4.2, 131 kilometers deep there into the Chile area. 
Uh, still seeing some movement and some squeezing going on here across the Caribbean plate. Uh, quite a few uh, earthquakes out here, including a 4.7 uh, just off the coast here of Venezuela. Uh, that's at the southern edge here of the plate boundary, which is the Caribbean plate right here, South America region to the south, obviously. Uh, we did have a 4.1 just after, uh, oh, early in the morning, about 2 o'clock local time here in the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands region, along with a handful of smaller quakes around the Puerto Rico Trench. Continuing to watch that uh, over here across the uh, big island of Hawaii. Looks like things are filling in, getting a lot more earthquake activity around the crater area or lava lake. Let's go ahead and check out the latest informational statement here from the HVO with regards to Kilauea Volcano. They haven't even put it out yet. Look at that. I have not even put it out. That was from yesterday. So let's go check it out ourselves here. Let's go to the Kilauea Volcano, see what's going on, see if we got any... Uh, any magma up at the surface yet. Still some, uh, well, a little bit of uh, volcanic gases seeping up there over the uh, lava lake region. I'm not seeing any uh, glowing out there right now. We did see a little bit last night, kind of little hot spots it looked like. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to see if this has gone into the eruptive stage yet or not. Check out this camera from the uh, HVO observation tower. Again, some volcanic gases kicking up out here. I think they would have, uh, I would hope that they'd put out the uh, notification if it was erupting. Uh, let's go ahead and check out these seismograph stations here. See if we got some that are working here. Maybe, maybe a couple. This one obviously is not working. This one's uh, way turned down. Look at that. You can't even see anything. That's, I don't even know why that's set like that. And back out here a little bit. Um, is this one working? Yeah, this one's working. This one's showing a little bit, a little bit of activity here. Uh, there's some of that movement. Uh, these are all earthquake signatures here on the seismograph station. A little bit of harmonic type tremor. This is magma movement for sure, I believe, um, in that mix of activity there at the Kilauea volcano. And again, some of these. Um, here's a little better view as well. Not for sure why this is cut off. Is that the past 12 hours? I guess it is. Looks a little odd. Um, but definitely some earthquake activity kicking up here. And um, the tilt meters. Let's see if one of these tilt meters is working here. Uh, does show pretty good inflation yesterday, it looks like. Dropping off slightly right now in the last few hours. But uh, we did have a pretty good rise in the tilt meter. It's obviously swelling due to the magma below. Uh, so we'll definitely continue to watch that. Still, earthquake activity uh, down there between one and two kilometers deep, although getting closer here to this area. Uh, over the past couple weeks, for the most part, the earthquake swarming has been confined just to the south area of Kilauea Volcano. Um, but now it looks like it's kind of leading up closer to where we expect the, uh, you know, some of that magma to find its way towards the surface around the crater lava lake area. We'll continue to watch that. One earthquake up here around Mauna Loa. Eight kilometers deep, though. 2.2. All right, uh, let's see what we got going on for the states. Not a whole lot going on here. A little bit of earthquake activity out across Illinois region. That uh, earthquake from last night, 2.7. Parkersburg, Illinois. And a small little microquake here from yesterday over in Tennessee. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, I'm surprised it got one up here at 2.6, but that's because it's that's above the 2.5 threshold that they set up here on the weekends. Uh, they don't normally show any microquakes, so let's see what we got going on. Kind of curious. Is there a swarm? I haven't even seen it yet. Uh, 2.6 is going to be, obviously, we see which one that is right here. That along with a handful, probably a little bit more. Uh, than a handful of smaller earthquake activity in the last few hours. It looks like we may be kicking up a little bit of swarming here at Yellowstone National Park. And uh, some of that activity from yesterday as well. But that's going to be the 2.6. I, They probably haven't reviewed it yet. Let's see. Oh, it has been reviewed. Okay. Uh, 2.6 at a depth of about 11 kilometers. That's actually fairly deep. Uh, of course, we can get some deeper activity here, but... Uh, We'll keep an eye on that. 
Either way, it looks like a little bit of swarming kicking up again. Uh, they're at Yellowstone National Park, mostly centered uh, just outside the caldera. The Yellowstone caldera is going to be in this black line. Uh, so it looks like around Maple Creek area is showing it the most prominent here. We'll continue to watch that. Maybe see if it kicks up. Um, nothing being reported here across the Mount St. Helens area. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, give a quick glance here at that volcano. And uh, see what we got here real quick. They, they have been having a little bit of earthquake activity here in a... Uh, some type of swarm fashion and kind of looks like there's still a little bit here's a couple of these signatures that are uh, I still don't know what they are they're not including them on the earthquake map uh, they'll include some smaller quakes but uh, these bigger ones I, I don't know what they are it's, I believe it's some type of activity well below the surface here and most of this movement uh, is shown to be taking place right up here at the top of Mount St. Helens so I'm just continuing to watch that. Looks a little bit quieter than it has uh, in the last few days. So definitely keep an eye on it. Okay, movement here around the Bernie area. Getting, uh, well, we're getting a little bit. Remember, we had that five pointer over here. Let me bring up the last seven days. We had a five pointer over here um, along. Did they drop that? Oh, no, the five pointer is right here. 5.0, uh, that 4.3 was just literally a minute after that 5.0 um, two days ago outside the Bernie area. They've had a little bit of movement aftershock activity, but it looks like um, getting some further movement away from this area down here in a little uh, region around Round Mountain here in Northern California, 2.2 and a 1.8 earlier this morning let's see if this has been reviewed or not it's still underneath automatic status so it's possible um, maybe these earthquakes earthquakes could be a little bit centered more around this swarming area so we'll have to wait see what they do with those quakes while they're um, you know it's underneath preliminary data right now somebody will probably get to it tomorrow uh, nothing else going on really across Northern California a handful of smaller quakes across the bay uh, Southern California here looks a little spotty. A um, couple smaller microquakes, although a 3.0 did kick off earlier this morning. That is on the Elsinore Fault. This area has been pretty quiet recently, so it looks like we got a little bit of strain wanting to build up out here or uh, maybe you know produce some earthquake activity since it has been so quiet. Um, so continue to watch that. Uh, again, that was just on the Elsinore Fault, the San Andreas Fault, which is right here, the plate boundary. A uh, handful of earthquakes on both sides of that plate boundary. Nothing really major going on, but uh, as always, we keep a close eye on that. A little bit of movement south of Tijuana as well. Uh, what else? Anything major going on out here? I think that's about it, folks, uh, for earthquake activity, space weather is not looking all that active right now goodness a little bit of sea flare activity popping up here in the last 24 hours or so but i don't think we got anything major to worry about as far as flaring goes looking at the latest magnetogram image does show that massive sunspot region here center disk of the sun uh, but it is separated by you know two different distinct cores there uh, it does ho does harbor a little bit of potential for some flaring, but I don't think we're going to see anything major from that area. And same for this region back here. We just got a handful of smaller um, sunspots, and none of these really look all that super dynamic in terms of the uh, ability to produce major flares. Here's the newer ones popping up. Maybe these will grow drastically and give us a chance of some strong flares, but we'll keep an eye on them. 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 45 X flare around 5% chance. That looks like a decent um, probability detail map right now. Uh, no major auroras in the forecast, unfortunately. Very minimal chances there of uh, the auroras. All right, Storm Prediction Center out here. Severe weather, well, slight risk out here across northern Texas, parts of Oklahoma, venturing into Colorado and Kansas as well. 
There is a 2% chance for tornadoes out there in that green zone. That includes Amarillo, Garden City, um, and these other regions around Texas here. I think the main threat, though, is going to be, uh, looks like some large hail. That's going to be in the dashed area. A pretty decent chance of seeing the 10% uh, uh, or greater probability of 2-inch diameter hail within 25 miles of a point. That's going to be the hatched area in this little dashed zone. So that includes Garden City, Liberal, Pampa, uh, Borger, Texas. Heads up. Probably already taking place out there right now. Uh, let's give a quick glance here at the radar, see what we got going on here for the uh, latest activity. Well, it looks like it's starting to stir up out there. Getting some storms firing up in these areas, so we'll continue to watch that for some severe th threat today. Uh, California, a little bit of movement out here in the southern portion of the state around the deserts. But, uh, yeah. Aside from that, uh, let's go ahead and check out the numerical models out here. With uh, you'd probably be able to see Hurricane Lee out here just on the bottom side. I kind of want to see how close it gets there to the states. Doesn't look like it's going to affect too much up here. Maybe a little bit into the extreme northeast, just clipping uh, that area a little bit later on. Uh, next week so we'll continue to watch that and of course and report back on that uh, for any updates again that's Hurricane Lee and we'll cover oh look at that one that's the one coming up behind it that model is showing a little bit more of a eastern seaboard impact you guys see that is that going to be Margot, right? I think I pronounced that correctly. I was wanting to know how to pronounce that, and I think that's right. I don't believe that's going to be this one here. Um, which one is that that's going to stir up? It's not going to be Lee, because Lee takes a path up north, and then there's one behind it that kind of swoops through. It could be. Who knows? This is Again, this is a ways out as far as that numerical model goes. Uh, I don't like to cover too far out, but it does show somewhat of an impact here on one of those mes uh, most recent runs, but we'll continue to watch that. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. I got a bunch of stuff I got to do by Monday, um, a bunch. So I got to leave uh, a little bit of brain cells left here so I can finish up my astronomy uh, essays and whatnot for school tomorrow. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Unless something major happens. Stay safe. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later.